Hello, and welcome to Florida Focus. I'm Aziz Turner. The man charged with killing a pregnant Tampa woman will remain behind bars. Today, a judge denied bond for rapper Billy Adams, who was charged with two counts of murder and the death of Alana Sims and her unborn baby. Her body was found two weeks ago next to her SUV. Her 18-month-old son was found unharmed and sleeping in the SUV. Friends of Sims said she would have turned 23 today. She was sweet. She had one of the biggest hearts ever. Like, she would do anything for anybody that she loved and she cared about, and she loved her son. Like, she adored him. The attorney for Adams filed a request to suppress media coverage of the trial after it gained attention by the international media, but the judge denied the request. The Chinese government is now accusing the U.S. of flying spy balloons in its airspace. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesman says since last year, more than 10 U.S. balloons flew without the approval of Chinese authorities. U.S. National Security Council has denied these allegations. Just yesterday, a U.S. fighter jet shot down an unknown object over Lake Huron. Prior to this, three additional objects were shot over the past eight days. The White House addressed the issue today. The president, through his national security advisor, has today directed an interagency team to study the broader policy implications for detection, analysis, and disposition of unidentified aerial objects that pose either safety or security risks. The College Board is accusing the Florida Department of Education of having political motivations when discussing a proposed AP African American Studies course. Emily Ward joins us with more on this story. In the beginning of February, College Board revised the course's material by removing 19 topics. Florida's Office of Articulation credited themselves for the changes made. College Board argued the adjustments were done without influence from any states. College student Kylie Fuller says she doesn't think Florida has enough power to cause a curriculum change. But I do think it's a little bit uh, silly to say that that the Department of Education has this you know massive influential role in what College Board says, what College Board does. I think it's also important to recognize that College Board made these de decisions as well. College Board says the pilot course was rejected without explanation when suggested to Florida. Following the course's announcement, DeSantis spoke out against it, claiming the material was historically inaccurate and rooted in critical race theory. Former College Board test taker Ruth Liu says DeSantis was attempting to make his political ideals known. I think he definitely was politically motivated because if he's having an impact on the College Board, then that's going to show that he has a lot of influence and that'll have a lot of effect on what people's view of him is. So I think it is dumb that he thinks that he influenced the College Board that much just because the College Board is such a big thing in the U.S. high schools. College Board admits to errors made in the course's initial creation, but believes Florida exploited them to establish a political win for DeSantis. In Tampa, Emily Ward reporting for Florida Focus. Police are still looking for the person responsible for an attempted robbery in Brandon. The suspect attempted to rob Truist Bank. The man walked in with a gray bag and a pipe bomb, but left the bag behind. The man did not leave with any cash, and no employees were hurt. The man was last seen walking east, then north outside the bank. The suspect is 5'11", 180 pounds, white male. He was last seen wearing a green camouflage shirt, blue jeans, and a black hat. If anyone has any information, call the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. The Hillsborough County School Board met today to discuss a fourth plan for redistricting. District members voiced their concerns of the scenario for proposed by Superintendent Addison Davis. This comes after the third plan that was announced came with a lot of negative feedback. Many members spoke on walking time for students to school and how overcrowding is expected with new homes being built. The community was not allowed to speak to the school board at today's meeting. However, there will be plenty of parents willing to weigh in. Michelle Gonzalez-Smith is keeping her fellow neighbors in mind. It's unfortunate for people that just bought in and they bought in especially for the schools for them to now tell them, I'm sorry, you're going to go to different schools when you specifically bought those properties to be in Grady, Coleman, and Plant. That would be really unfair. District 1 member Nadia Combs also suggested adding a fifth scenario for the superintendent to consider. The next meetings are scheduled for next week on Monday through Thursday. Today is the last day to apply for FEMA support if you are affected by Hurricane Nicole. The application is for homeowners and renters in Brevard, Flagler, St. John's, Putnam, Volusia, or Lake Counties. FEMA is only valid for those who have suffered losses or damage from Nicole. To apply for FEMA aid, visit disasterassistance.gov or call the hotline at 800-621-3362. A woman in Harrisburg County learned she had a cold-blooded neighbor in trouble. Community resident Amber Locke says she found a gator with its mouth taped shut in a retention pond. And now it's been two months and the trapper that apparently lost it when taping it hasn't been able to catch it. Locke has reached out to animal rescue groups, but permits make retrieving the gator difficult. This has been a Florida Focus News Break. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.